Hello, this is Ms. DB, and today we are going to work on Chapter 4, Section 4, on easier ways to show that triangles are congruent. And the two methods we're going to use are SSS, which is, stands for side, 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 and side, angle, side, or SAS for short. These are going to be much easier ways to show that you have two congruent triangles rather than naming or showing that every single corresponding angle is congruent and every single corresponding side is congruent. So we're going to start with a little warm-up here. The first one says name the angle formed by ray AB and ray AC. Well note that A and A are the same. Those are the endpoints of the ray. So this must be A and then AB can go that way and AC can go that way. So how would you name the angle? You could name it angle A, or, because that's the vertex, or you could name it angle BAC, or you could name it angle CAB. Okay, the next one says name the three sides of triangle ABC. Again, that's much easier to do if you have a picture. So draw a triangle, name it ABC, and then you can see that the segments would be segment AB, that's right here, segment AC, that's right here, and segment BC, which would be right here. Now the last one says that triangle QRS, QRS is congruent to triangle LMN, LMN. And then it says name all pairs of congruent corresponding parts. Well, there's angles that are congruent. Angle Q would be congruent to angle L. They're both listed first in the naming of the triangle. Angle R would be congruent to angle M. They're both in the middle. And angle S would be congruent to angle N. Also, there's sides that are congruent to each other. Side QR would be congruent to LM. Side RS would be congruent to side MN. And side QS would be congruent to side LN. So if you're asked to name all the congruent corresponding parts, this is what you would write. You'd have three sides that were congruent to each other, and you'd have three angles that are congruent to each other. Our objectives today are to use side, 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 and side, angle, side to construct triangles and also to solve problems. And then our big thing is to prove triangles are congruent by using side, 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 and side, angle, side. So remember, side, side, SSS stands for side, 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 which means that three sides of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding three sides of the other congruent. And then SAS is side, Oops, side, angle, side. Oops, I wrote angle twice, or I wrote the A twice. Side, angle, side for SAS. Triangle rigidity is a term we're going to talk about and included angle. So in the last section, we talked about how to show that triangles were congruent by showing that all six pairs of corresponding parts were congruent three angles and three sides. The property of triangle rigidity gives you a shortcut for proving that two triangles are congruent. It states that if the side lengths of a triangle are given, the triangle can only have one shape. You can do this by taking three different size sticks or straws or pens or any straight you know, segment pieces and making a triangle with three of them. Now take those same three pieces and try to make a different size and shape triangle and you won't be able to do it. Given three side lengths, there's only one triangle that you can create. There's a postulate that goes with this. It's called the side, side, side congruence postulate. We use SSS for short. The postulate says if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. For your reason, you would just write side, side, side. The whole thing would be side, side, side congruence postulate, but we'll just call it side, side, side. So this shows that even though these triangles don't aren't aligned the same way, they're, they're rotated, one's rotated or flipped or whatever, when one's four, six, and seven, and the other one is also four, six, and seven centimeters, those two triangles will be congruent. Adjacent triangles share a side. So finally, we're going to get to use this reflexive property that you learned about in chapter 2, or chapter 3, 
Now, chapter two, we learned the reflexive property, and now we'll use it in these proofs. Here's an example. Triangle ABC and triangle DBC are adjacent triangles. They share a side. This side is shared. So BC, side BC, is part of triangle ABC, and it's also part of triangle DBC. Well, it's the same side. So by the reflexive property, BC is congruent to itself. So we could mark this side with three little marks. Now we can see that triangle ABC has side, side, side. This side's congruent to AB is congruent to BD. AC is marked congruent to DC, and BC is congruent to BC. So we can use side, because that side to that side, this side to this side, and then this one is congruent to itself. So side, side, side works. Okay, here's another example. It says use side, side, side to explain why. Well, you would start by saying that given, here, let's write this like a real proof. Statements, reasons. You can get givens out of the picture, out of the diagram. So it is marked that segment AD is congruent to segment BC. That's given from the picture. It's also marked in the picture that DC is congruent to AB. It's marked in the picture. That's given. Finally, we have AC is the third shared side. So we can write that AC is congruent to AC by the reflexive property. And then our last step would be saying what we wanted to show was that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. And we can say that that is true by the side, side, side triangle congruence postulate. But you can just write side, 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 SSS. That's a proof. We we had side, 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 so we have enough to say side, 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 triangle congruence postulate. Now they're going to write it in like a sentence instead, but you can write a two-column proof and see why it's true a little bit easier. All right, an included angle is an angle formed by two adjacent sides of a polygon. B is the included angle between sides AB and sides BC, because it's touching both sides. See, this angle is touching this side, and it's touching this side. So it's called the included angle. OK, so there's another thing that we, we can use, and you probably guess what it's going to be, something to do with this. Only two sides of a congruent corresponding sides are needed to prove the congruence of two triangles if the included angles are also congruent. So this postulate says, the side angle side congruence postulate says that if two sides, so here we have side AB congruent to side EF, and we also have that side AC is congruent to side ED, and we also know that angle A is congruent to angle D, then the triangles are congruent. So that's another way that we can show that we have congruent triangles. You must write it SAS. This angle is touching this side and it's touching this side. You cannot rewrite it as SSA and you can't write it in the reverse order because it'd be a bad word so that's how you can remember. You only can have the A in the middle because that angle actually touches this side, it actually touches this side, it has to be in the middle. If it's not then you can't use this postulate. Like if they gave us you know this angle and this angle that's not the angle between the two sides congruent. So that would not be enough to show that you have congruent triangles. All right, let's look at this one. Hmm, we've got a side marked congruent to a side, and we've got another side marked congruent to another side. What angle do we know is congruent, and how do we know it? So think about it for a minute. It's something we learned way back in Chapter 1. What do we call two angles when you have an X shape and they're opposite each other? And then we proved in Chapter 2 that this shows that these two angles are congruent to each other. They're called vertical angles. So we would write in our little proof with our statements and our reasons. In our reasons, we would start with the two givens, which are in the diagram. So I'm going to write that xz 
is congruent to VZ because it's given. Also given is that YZ is congruent to V, no, I already did VZ, WZ, WZ, because they're both marked with two little marks. That's how we know they're congruent to each other. That's also given. So we've got a side and a side so far. The other angle that we need is vertical angles. These two angles are congruent because they are vertical angles, and the vertical angles theorem says that vertical angles are congruent. So now we can say that we can't call that angle Z, because which angle are we talking about? But we can say angle XZY is congruent to angle um, VZW by the vertical angles theorem. And now that's our A, and it's the included angle. It's the angle touching both congruent sides, both con corresponding congruent sides. So by SAS, we would then be able to say that triangle XYZ is congruent to triangle VWZ. So these are very... Um, kind of nice and neat little tiny proofs that you'll often be given two things, two parts that you need, and you'll just have to say why the third is true by the reflexive property or by vertical angles or by some other method that you have learned about so far. And then you can say that the two triangles are congruent by SAS. Okay, this is just another example. Why don't you try this one? Write up a little proof and then see if your reasoning matches the reasoning that, that I'll give you or that the book will give you. Now they wrote it in a paragraph form, but I would I like two par I like the two column form. Statement reasons. So I would write the two givens down. There's two givens up there. I know that side A B is congruent to side D B. How do I know that? It's in the picture. They're both marked with one little mark, tick mark. That's given. I also know two angles are congruent to each other because it's marked with congruent angle marks. So angle ABC is congruent to triangle, let's see, DBC. That's also given. So I know two things. I know a side and I know an angle. So most likely what I need to find is another side. And I can find another side because it's shared. If they ever share a side, that side's congruent to itself. So BC is congruent to BC because of, we finally get to use it, the reflexive property. And then our last step would be to say that the two triangles are congruent. That's what this is. This is what we're trying to prove. Hey, okay, where'd it go? No, no. There we go. We're trying to prove this. So that's going to be your last statement. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC because of side, angle, side. There you go. The SAS postulate guarantees that if you are given the lengths of two sides and the measure of the included angles, you can construct one and only one triangle. This says show that the triangles are congruent for the given value of the variable. So if we can plug 5 in and get the same um, side lengths, then we'll know the two triangles are congruent. So this one's already done, right? It's 7, 5, and 6. If we plug 5 in for x and the other ones and get the same values, then we know that the triangles will be congruent. So when we plug it into side PQ, we get 7. Okay, That means that this side is congruent to this side same lengths. When we plug 5 in here, we get 5, so this side is congruent to this side, and when we plug it into the last side, we get 6, which means that this side is congruent to this side. Therefore, since because of side, 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 the two triangles are congruent. Okay, here's one where we're missing some um, an angle as well. And y is 4, so we're, this one's all done. It's got a 7 for one side, an 11 for one side, and 92 degrees for an angle. We'll plug 4 in to the missing parts of the triangle STU 
and we'll see that we also get 11, 7, and 92. So let's see, for st, we got 11. So this side is congruent to this side. For tu, we got 7. So this side is congruent to this side. And for the angle, we got 92. So these two are congruent. So by SAS, the two triangles are congruent. This is just another example of doing the same kind of thing. Plug 4 into the missing parts wherever T is and see what you get. So here's our missing things. DA ends up being 13. DC also ends up being 13, so these two sides are congruent. 2t squared, this angle down here, ends up being 32 degrees, so this angle is congruent to this angle. And of course, db is congruent to db. Hey, that's my name. <laughs> so by, reflex, by um, side angle side, we have shown that the two triangles are congruent to each other. All right, and then the last step is just proving triangles congruent using a two-column proof. This won't be bad because we've been doing this all along. There's some given information here. You're given that BC is congruent to AD. Well, we could have found that in the picture anyway. We're also given that BC is parallel to AD. Now, why is that important? That's important because you learned in Chapter 3 all kinds of nice things about parallel lines cut by a transversal. See this transversal? Like you learned that um, corresponding angles are congruent and alternate interior angles are congruent and same side interior angles are congruent and, or are supplementary and so on. What we have is we have two parallel lines. Here's our parallel lines. I'm coloring them green just so you can see them. There's, oh no, not that one. That's the wrong one. <laughs> These are the parallel lines. So make sure you're looking at the right ones. These lines are marked parallel. And they're cut by the one I already colored red, the transversal. So we don't want anything about exterior angles because we don't know any of the exterior angles. But we do know that alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So we're going to use that in our proof. We'll also use the reflexive property because these two triangles are adjacent. They share side BD. So let's, let's fill out our proof. Write down your givens. Got two steps. And they only wrote the first given down, and then they used alternate interior angles. You don't have to do it that way. You can put both your givens down first if you want. But the, they said, write your first given down, which is that you have parallel lines. And then from that, we can see that angle CBD is congruent to angle ABD by, or, yeah, I said that right, by the alternate interior angles theorem. So this is very important that you remember your theorems from last chapter and even from chapter 2 and chapter 1. Any theorems, postulates, or definitions can be used in reasons of your proofs. Okay, then let's put our other given down that BC is congruent to AD. And then what was the other thing we were going to use? We were going to use the reflexive property to say that segment BD is congruent to segment BD. Let me mark that on here. So now we've got a side, and then we have an included angle, and then another side. So the two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. So here was our angle, here's our side, here's our side, and we have that uh, side, angle, side, because that's where our angle has to be between the two given sides. All right, and then let's do one more proof. This time we are told that QP, ray QP, bisects angles RQS. Well, what does it mean if you have an angle that has been bisected? This is back to chapter one. If you have an angle that has been bisected, it means you end up with two congruent angles. These are exactly the same size. We also are going to use the reflexive property to show that QP is congruent to QP. All right, so let's write our first given down that side QR is congruent to side QS. That's given. Let's write our other given down that that ray bisects the angle. That's also given. From that, we can write that angle RQP is congruent to angle SQP because of the definition, they should say angle bisector, definition of angle bisector. That's what it means to be an angle bisector. 
Then we use our reflexive property to say that QP is congruent to QP. They share a side. And then look, we have enough to say that the two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side, side, angle, side. This is just one more proof. Um, why don't you try this one on your own and then check and see how you did. So pause the video, try this one, and see what you end up with. You're going to have statements, and you're going to have reasons. Usually you will have at least four steps. And remember that if you are bisecting a line segment, that will cut this into two congruent parts. So PN bisects MO, meaning that MN will be congruent to NO. You'll use that in your proof. All right, so let's look at this one. This one's a little bit trickier, actually. So we know that, I didn't want to show all the steps. We know that um, PN bisects, we'll write our given down, MO given. And because of that, let's say what happens. Because of that, MN is congruent to NO. The reason, definition of, I guess, bisector, segment bisector. All right. We are also given that PN is perpendicular. This symbol means perpendicular to MO. That is also given. What does that mean? That means that PN and NO are right angles. So by definition of perpendicular, we know that angle MNP is equal to 90 degrees, and also that angle ONP equals 90 degrees. That means that angle MNP is congruent to angle, I should have wrote that the measures of these were 90, measure ONP because of the um, right triangle congruence theorem. That one said that all right angles are congruent to each other. All right, so now we have this angle is congruent to this angle. Finally, PN is congruent to PN because of the reflexive property. They share the same side. So we have enough to say by side, angle, side. Here's our side, angle, side, that the two triangles, and just write these exactly the same as it is up here. MNP is congruent to triangle ONP by side angle side. And there we have it. All done. Proof. This one took a couple more steps because we had to use um, from our two givens. Both of those needed one more step after that, after you write the given, to say then why you would have a congruent side or a congruent angle. And here is their nicer writing, but they did the exact same steps that we did. All right, that's it then. Thank you very much, and please let me know if you have any questions or if you get stuck on any of these proofs. But remember, look for, look for congruent sides, look for congruent angles, and if you have three congruent parts, either side, 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 or side, angle, side, then you have enough to say that your two triangles are congruent. Thanks a lot.